Welcome back to Riding with B. Cray. I'm B. Cray, I'm your host. We talk about anything and everything. And today, we're gonna do another B. Cray update. So, let's get into it. The last video I left off with, that I am going, I am PCSing, I am moving, the Army's moving me, job is moving me, to Fort Hood, Texas, AKA now called Fort Cavazas. Once again, y'all, y'all know, already know how I feel about this, 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 this debacle of of me going to this doggone place. I'm not a Texas lover. I, I'm not a Texas lover at all. But let me bring you up today on what's been going on. So, as I start my, as I'm getting myself ready to PCS, I, I've started to to take in the fact that I, I there is a 95% chance that I'm leaving now, the, the percentage did go up, that I'm leaving. And, you know, like, I gotta ship car, I gotta ship household goods, and then like, and, and then, I, like, then I gotta sell a house, you know? I, I asked the Army for a 30-day deferment. And they all said like, what is a deferment? And I think I talked about that in my last video. The deferment only said, let me stay here an additional 30 days so I can sell my home. I, and I said it a million times and I will keep saying it again. I will not go into financial debt because of the army. It's just not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen now. It's not gonna happen later. If I put myself in financial debt because I put myself there, I will not put myself there because, because the military says I have to go somewhere. There should be. And once again, this what goes to this common sense of how the military should be, but it's not. I should, it should be in the, it should be in the rigs. The way the market is today, you have, like, if you have to stay to sell your property and show proof that you're selling your property, you should be able to stay here until your property is sold. I should not have to keep begging to stay here until my property is sold. I mean, I think people have forgotten the economy that we live in now. Like the interest rates, like my home is right now worth seven hundred and seventy some thousand dollars. Once again, don't look at me strange. This is Hawaii, and that that's just how stuff is in Hawaii. Stuff is expensive in Hawaii. When we bought the house, it was originally five hundred and five hundred fifty thousand dollars. But as you said, stuff goes up in the world. Uh, stuff goes up in the world, and yeah, now house worth seven is some change. Current interest rate that we have, the current interest rate that we have. I pay 2400 bucks a month for rent. I mean for mortgage. That includes my insurance and that also includes my taxes, right? The average house now, the average house now with interest rates now, the average house of 70 of 700 and some thousand dollars, right? My house. You're going to be looking at close to $4,000 for for a mortgage, right? And then you have to look at the BAH, which is the basic housing allowance that is in Hawaii alone, and then the jobs that Hawaii has to offer. No BAH is over four thousand dollars. I'm sorry, it just doesn't happen. There is no BAH that's like my BAH is four thousand dollars. I am an E7, my BAH rolls somewhere around three thousand. That's rolling somewhere around it, and that's with no that's with no dependence whatsoever. And I only have a three bedroom house, and it's only a thousand ish square feet. So you look at, you want somebody to walk up, to drive up into Hawaii or fly into Hawaii, buy my property and be like, yeah, I'm going to take on a $4,000 mortgage. You know, because once they add, and once they add all the insurance and, and you know, your property taxes, that's what it's going to be. So that is the dilemma that I'm in. So now I'm looking at, let's look at putting up for rent, right? There is still things you have to do to put it up for rent. And I know in some of you mind who knows me very well, like, bro, you've been on these orders since February. No, you supposed to report it back in July. Yeah, I supposed to report it in July. But once again, it goes back to the fact that I'm not trying to go. But now I'm seeing the fact that I have to go, so now we'll go. You know what I'm saying? So that's dilemma one, right? Dilemma two, I went, for those of y'all who knows me, I have a knee problem, right? I had a knee problem since I was at JBLM and it hurts when I run, you know, it hurts when I, now it really hurts when I dance, y'all know, once the alcohol starts flowing, I love to dance. So, I went to medical on, what day was it, Friday? Went to medical on Friday, right? So I was like, hey, look, bruh, y'all have done all you possibly can do for my knee. 
You gave me physical therapy. You gave me you gave me injections in my knee. They help lubricate the knee, make me feel better. You put me on, you put me on a profile. That's not working. It still hurts. Blase, blase, blase. Now I'm telling the doctor that's like, bruh, it hurts when I wear my gear. It just hurts when I walk. Like, bruh, I'm telling him all this stuff, right? He looks dead in my face. No, no, let me go back. I said, he said, what do you want to do? I said, med board me or medical retire me at this point. Because there's nothing more I can do for the military at this point. Medical retire me. This dude looked dead in my face and told me just like this. I don't think your injury is enough for a med board or a medical retirement. It made me wonder, right? I was like, it made me wonder. You got these little knucklehead 20 year olds, 22 year olds. Oh, I hurt my pinky toe. Oh, I got this and boom, they're off the army in less than two weeks on a, med on a medical chapter. It makes no sense to me that I cannot go and get a medical retirement for a knee. If war breaks loose right now, you want me to put on my ruck, my IBA, which is a doggone plate carrier, and all this junk, and you want me to run somewhere? Want me to run somewhere? I can't do that no more. I can't do that no more. But I, but my injury is not enough for me to get out of the military on a medical retirement. This man told me, just retire. No, no, med board me, like medical retire me. He was like, well, if that's what you want, okay. But you have to, um, you have to go back to the doctors that gave you the injection and then they're gonna they're gonna make the determination, but when it goes up to the board, the board can say you're not you're not good enough for a medical retirement, but we're a false retire you out. Tell me what kind of garbage is that? What kind of garbage that a 23 year service member that the military broke, and I'm just gonna say how it is that the military broke cannot get out on a medical retirement because my injury is not hurt enough for a medical retirement people when i tell you the army the aims of the army the military is so disoriented it is so backwards it is so crazy it is ridiculous that's what this doctor told me to my face so in other words what he what he tells me if you want to this is how i took it if you want to get rid of some of your pain just go back and get some more injections. Where it's like just lube it up your lube it up your joints, like an oil change more or less. Then you can get then you can get back out there and do what you need to do. No, no, it doesn't even make sense to me. You want me to put more needles in my knee, more needles. So y'all may ask, what is this needle crap that they put in your knee? And yes, I'm kind of upset about this. They asked me so that you probably ask yourself, what is this needle crap that they put in your knee, right? So. They take blood from you. They draw like a tube of blood from you, right? Then with that tube of blood that they take from you, they put it in this machine and they separate They separate the blood pellets and then you get like just a little liquid gel, right? They say it's liquid gel. They take the liquid gel and then they insert it into like the meaty part of your knee. That's what to give your knee more lubrication so it can move freely the way it's supposed to. People, when I tell you that shit hurts, it freaking hurts. The, the the I think the second you have a you have three you have a three series injection, right? The first one went okay. The second one when she injected me the second time, I feel like my kneecap was about to pop clean off. I feel like my kneecap would just pop off and go on. She's like, don't worry, don't clench up, it's okay. No heifer, it's not okay. You hurt, my kneecap is about to pop off, you know? But you want me to go through that again? Lady, please, like you got me somewhat confused with, with somebody that's, that's totally out of control. But that, that's been my life these last couple weeks, right? Then on top of everything, right? I already knew I wasn't going home for Christmas. I knew that because how my report date is set up, how my requesting deferment is set up and leave is set up. I already had my heart set that I was not going home. I'm, I'm good with that. I would just spend Christmas and New Year's on this island 
with the few friends that I have on this island, right? So I put in Lee just stay on the island. First sergeant, he denied my leave. Actually, the commander denied my leave first because the first sergeant told him to. Then I re-put, when I put my deferment in, I re-put my leave in again, and then first sergeant denied it right in my face. <laughs> he just denied it right in my face. I'm like, dang, first sergeant, just right in my face, huh? Ain't no we laugh about it. And he was like, I can't approve your leave because you are supposed to be gone. You're supposed to be leaving uh, in a month or so. And I was like, yeah, you're right. He like, if I approve your leave now, later on, the army is going to catch it. And then you're going to have more tr more troubles on the back end now that everything is so uh, everything is so computerized and supposedly all this crap, right? Irritated times 10. Now I'm irritated times 10. Now I got to work the entire time. Now, work is not that hard. I would go in for a couple of hours and then I would go home. But it's just the fact that I have to get up out of my bed in the morning and go to work. I can't just sleep in with the covers. I'm like, oh, it's so nice. I can't do that because I have to go to work and I have to deal with soldiers. Soldiers is not going home. So I have to deal with all this stuff. But it is okay. It is okay. I still have people working my issue. I still got people working my issue to keep me here. So one thing about me, you know I'm a positive person. I'm going to try to stay as positive as I can because I know that there is something on the other side. Whether whether I go to Hood or Cavasis or whether I stay here, I know there is something good on the on the other side. I had to vent it out because it is the worst thing that I ever seen in my life. Like I can't look, look people, I can't go to mental health because, Hey, I'm not crazy enough. <laughs> I can't get out on a medical discharge because, Hey, I'm not broke enough. So I guess if I go out here, run my car off the side of the bridge and break my leg, that's probably the only way I can go home now. You know, I joke about it. I play about it. I would never do anything like those along those lines, but that's how you have to think in the military. Like, you, I, I know a soldier that has a bad back. He has a bad back. But, <laughs> with, they're about to chop to him out. It ain't nothing wrong with that dude. There's nothing wrong with him whatsoever. But they're about to chop to him out. I'm like, bruh, how? Like, I don't understand. I just, I don't understand how this stuff works. And it's just, it, it just bobbles my ever-loving mind. But people, I am at my destination. I done passed the parking garage. But it, but anyway, look, like I said, I love and appreciate every last, every last one of y'all. Thanks for listening to me vent for like 15, 20 minutes. I love each and every one of y'all. I will see you on the uh on the next one. Peace. Yeah.